So, let me ask you a question to begin with of my own. Is it possible to be stalked by a city? For two years, I've been stalked by Cardiff. <laughs> I was at the Creative Cities Convention in Leeds in 2017, and there was a competition that day for who would host that same convention the next time it's held in 2019. And it was won by Cardiff, led by Councillor Hugh Thomas, who I believe is here this evening. I'm delighted to say ITV will be a sponsor of that. So there was Cardiff just saying, keep an eye on me, keep an eye on me. So later in 2017, I was writing the review of the creative industries that you kindly uh, referred to, uh, which was essentially a report on how we could grow the creative industries even faster to feed into the government's industrial strategy. Uh, and I wanted to draw on one of the city deal models, because city deals, which were done a few years ago, uh, were the model for what I proposed, which I'll say a bit more about in a minute. And the best example I find was Cardiff's city deal and the investment in the digital infrastructure here. OK, Cardiff, there you are again. But it goes on. The invitation to speak here tonight <coughs> arrived. And that was great. So I was getting the message. There was a, that was a triple whammy of Cardiff's. But last month, um, at the launch of the Creative Industries Clusters, which I'll say again a bit more about in a minute, one of the winning nine bids, led by Professor Justin Lewis at Cardiff University, but with other partners, including the University of South Wales, um, or as I should call it, cluster, I'm going to get this right. I said I was going to get this right, and I said I wasn't going to hesitate, and I've hesitated. Cluster cre digal. Is that sort of just about? Thank you. There's an element of sympathy in that applause, I thought, <laughs> but never mind. Um, that cluster, that winning cluster, uh, to drive innovation in the growing screen industries here, which we'll talk more about later, that was something else that put Cardiff strongly on, on the agenda and on my wavelength. Now, later this week, uh, again, I, I, I have not ended the number of uh, times Cardiff has stalked me. Later this week, in, in about three days' time, I, shall, I expect some of you will be too, looking around at some faces I recognize. I shall be at a fundraising dinner for WNO, which is an organization I know well because uh, we funded it when I was chair of the Arts Council. And indeed, I enjoyed uh, its operas not only here at the Millennium Center, but also in Plymouth and Birmingham when it goes on tour. So, what this tells you, I may, I, was I being personally stalked by Cardiff, or do I have an oversized egomaniac. I must re repeat to myself, it's not all about you, Peter Basildon. It's not all about you. What this tells you, doesn't it? Just think of the number of examples I've just told you in the last few months, a couple of years, is that this is a city thriving, full of talent and ideas, and with a distinctive culture. And so I'm delighted to be here this evening, and my message to Cardiff, Cardiff is, stalk away, Cardiff, stalk away. Uh, I'd like to say a bit more, and you mentioned it in your kind introduction, about my review of the creative industries. So its purpose, as I said, was to come up with ideas for the government's industrial strategy um, uh, that, that would feed into it when they finally, uh, as it were, finalised the strategy this year. And it, was, uh, it represented quite a step forward for the creative industries, because in 2011, Vince Cable, who was the business minister in the coalition, came up with 11 sectors of priority for the British economy, an offshore wind was one of them, but uh, uh, the creative industries was not. And yet the creative industries is now worth £100 billion a year, as defined. And I think you know loosely it's a different fashion, media, uh, advertising and marketing, uh, computer games, all sorts of different elements to it. It's worth £100 billion a year to the British economy. It's growing at almost three times the rate of the British economy. And it's 5% of GDP. <laughs> So my challenge to myself in the report I did about it, and I was really pleased that we'd finally got the creative industries onto the agenda and onto the industrial strategy agenda, my challenge to myself was how can one of my challenges, not just how can we get them to grow, but how can we get them to grow outside London and the southeast as well as London and the southeast. So the creative industries, not unlike other sectors, 46% of them currently are in London and the southeast. So how could we rebalance? And I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Now, I pointed out that the creative industries are going to, if they're at their current rate of growth, are going to create a million jobs by 2030. And I'll ask you to think about that by contrasting it to the fact that artificial intelligence will destroy jobs in many other sectors. 
from traffic wardens, which we won't be too sorry about, um, to uh, surgeons. In fact, when I said from traffic wardens to surgeons the other day in uh, something I wrote in the Financial Times, a very angry letter came back from a surgeon. But no angry letters came back from traffic wardens. I don't know what that tells us.